want to talk about pressure for just a moment here. Whether we're talking about pressure coming from a gas or a liquid, or just the solid sitting on top of something, uh, it, it's the same type thing. Pressure is force divided by area, and the classic example is the high heel that even when the Hewitt Problems talks about an elephant foot sitting on the ground uh, versus a stiletto heel uh, with the average sized person wearing a stiletto heel and the difference in pressure and the fact that even though the force from the elephant is a lot greater than the person standing, the pressure is a lot greater from the stiletto heel because the, the tip is really narrow. Now there's some other variables where you could debate that, but that's the essence of it. But when you think about pressure, especially with gases, realize this is all Newton's laws. Now the trouble is that if I've got a balloon and I've got gases inside of it, the gases are not exerting actually a constant pressure on it. Now from a macroscopic point of view, yes, they are. That the molecules are moving so quickly and they hit against the sides and that happens so fast that we can't tell, we can't notice the fluctuation as the, you know, one hits and bounces off and the next one hits and bounces off. And there's some small statistical fluctuations, but we don't notice that. And so we have this whole new set of equations that kind of deal with that because frankly, when it gets too complicated, it becomes a lot harder to just start with F equals MA or even from energy consideration because, I mean, there are millions and billions and, you know, huge numbers of gas molecules inside a balloon. Even if it's a tiny balloon, there's still a whole lot and you can bring Avogadro's number into it and that kind of stuff. So what we're talking about here is pressure really is we have a molecule or atom or whatever it happens to be hidden against the side of something. Uh, I'm going to use the balloon still. So we have a gas, some molecule of gas hits against the side and when it hits against the side it basically gets shot backwards. It's not passing through it. It hits it and bounces back. Well, from a momentum point of view, uh, in order for the momentum to change, and the momentum does change because it changes direction. Even if the velocity, do, even if the speed does not change, the velocity definitely does because there's a change in direction. Because there's a change in direction, an impulse has to be applied. That impulse is equal to not only the change in momentum, but force times the time it takes, the time of contact. And so what we have here is a force being applied by the balloon surface, inner surface, to the molecule. And by Newton's third law, the molecule is exerting a force on the balloon. And so therefore, all we're talking about here is that there's a force being applied to it. Now, because gases are experiencing what's called Brownian motion, because gases are basically pushing against the side in all directions, well, we have to somehow deal with that. We have to come up with some way of measuring a huge number of these tiny little acts. And these huge number of tiny little acts does not really, uh, it's not convenient to look at each one individually. And so we have to average the whole thing. And that's where the statistics comes in. Statistics basically says it is way too complicated to look at individual ones. We have to look at the, the whole thing and come up with our, uh, not really, I was about to say best guess, but it's not really a best guess. You have to come up with some way of measuring that. And that's, in essence, that is pressure. We're talking about the force divided by the total surface area, inner surface area, in, in that case, or if we're talking about the air molecule, air molecules, not that air molecules really exist. What I mean by that, sorry, didn't mean to go down this side road. What I mean by that is when I say air molecules, I'm talking about the molecules in the air. Air is not a specific molecule. Air is composed of a whole lot of different other molecules, such as oxygen molecule, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, argon. As a matter of fact, nitrogen, oxygen, and argon are the top three gases in there. So when I say air molecule, I'm talking about the molecules in air and what we call air, which is just a mixture. So if we're talking about the air molecules hitting from the outside or whatever gas is on the inside hitting outwards, basically pressure is, it's a statistical thing. And that's where it is. Now, in order to be able to handle this mathematically, we have a couple of classic laws. The ideal gas law is the main one. That's just a compilation of 
Guy Lussac's Law or Guy Lussac's Law, uh, Charles Law, Boyle's Law, all that is just the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. If you had chemistry, that's probably been drilled into. But the pressure times the volume is equal to the number of moles times this constant called, I think cleverly, the gas constant times the temperature, in absolute temperature, in other words, Kelvin-based or Rankine-based. So that is uh, the ideal gas law. That's how we deal with it. Uh, ideal gas law, let's take it another thing. So there it is.